Welcome to this video. In this video, I wanted to go back to planetary migration in a disk, but then also have a look at the type 2 migration where it can actually interact with a vortex, which is more like the type 3. So you can actually get a combination of the two here. So just a recap, if you haven't seen the other videos on planetary migration, planets don't always stay where they form or as they're forming they can actually move in and out on their orbit so they can wander about and this is called planetary migration now when planets form they typically form around a star so the star will collapse from a cloud of gas we assume that most planets at least will form with the stars as they are actually forming at the same time so they will actually form kind of a disk around the young star. So these are some images of disks actually around young stars. So at this point, these stars are not on the main sequence. They're not fusing hydrogen in their core. And as a result of that, they don't have these strong stellar winds to blow away the gas. So you still have these gas disks around them, which is where the planets will form before the star actually becomes a proper star. And when that occurs, it will blow away all the gas. So the planets have to form in that time period around the star before that gas disk is dissipated. So in this disk, they're forming in the disk, but they also move in it as well. So as they're forming and growing, they interact with the disk and that interaction between the planet and the disk is what causes them to move either out or in and actually interact with each other as well. So when we discover exoplanets, we have found quite a lot of close-in planets. Now, the disk doesn't have enough mass to form these quite large gas giants or these hot Jupiters or any other planet, actually, for that matter, at some of these locations because they are quite close. So the planets can't form there, so there has to be something that moves them there, which is the planetary migration. Now, there are three main types of migration in a disk. You've got type 1, type 2, and type 3. Now, type 1 is where you've got a small terrestrial planet forming in the disk. It moves due to type 1, which means that it doesn't distort or alter the main structure of the disk. So it's small enough that it doesn't gravitationally alter the disk, really. It doesn't distort it in any way or change its structure. Type 2 these planets are quite large now. These are going to be gas giant sort of size. And these actually do change the structure of the disk. They will clear out a gap in them. So you actually get a gap in these disks now when you get to type 2. And then type 3 would be where a presumably type 1 planet, smaller planet, would interact with a vortex in the disk itself. And that will alter how it actually migrates. It can actually cause a sudden burst in its velocity, so it can kind of move in suddenly and then stop again, whereas the other two are a little bit smoother. So type 3 is where you've got these stable vortexes interacting with the planets. So type 2 can interact with vortexes as well. And it causes a similar sort of thing, actually, but this time around you've got a gap. And that gap is important to how these actually interact because the planet is not directly going into the vortex or anything like that. It's what that vortex does to the gap and the material in the disk, which then relates to how that planet is then going to move. So to get a type 2 migration, they will transition from type 1. So as they're growing in size, they get bigger and bigger. And once they get to around about Saturn size, it's always dependent on the properties of the disk and things like that once they get to Saturn sort of size then they will transition into type 2 where they actually begin to clear out a gap so it occurs around about that sort of size and I've put an image of Saturn there it doesn't mean that actually a planet that is clearing this gap out is actually going to have rings around it it may actually have a more a, a gas ring around or gas disk it's not going to look like Saturn at all it's more a representation of the sort of size that it gets to really. Now the width of that gap is mostly determined by like the temperature of the disk, the viscosity of the of the gas in the disk, and also the planet's mass. So the bigger the planet, the wider the gap it's going to clear up because it's going to have more mass, 
it will gravitationally have a wider kind of um, field that it can interact with or so the, the sphere of influence around it's going to be larger because it has a, a larger mass the same thing actually occurs with Saturn's rings so we actually have moons inside Saturn's rings and they clear out gaps as well now the width of the gap that that moon creates relates to its mass a bigger moon causes a wider gap so exactly the same sort of thing with a planet in a gas disk although you have gas in that which so the physics is slightly different but bigger planets do the same thing they make a bigger gap now with type 2 migration the planet migrates with the viscous evolution of the disk that basically means if it's in the inner part of the disk it will migrate in if it's in the outer part it will migrate out and what do we mean by the viscous evolution of the disk well these disks behave with some viscosity which means that they kind of spread so the inner part of the disk is kind of flowing onto the star and the outer part is spreading outwards so if the planet is in the inner part of the disk then it will move inwards towards the star and if it's in the outer part then it does the opposite it will move out with the actual disk itself and that's because the gap it creates locks it to the viscous <coughs> the, the evolution essentially of the disk now the migration rates for type 1 and 2 are typically smooth they don't undergo any sudden rapid bursts where they will suddenly jump inwards quite fast it will be quite smooth it's not linear so they will change their velocity depending on the properties of the disk at their location the mass of the planet that sort of thing but it will still be relatively smooth now you can get type 2 migration where the gap is not the same width all the way around so it's non axisymmetric which basically means that it's narrower at some points than others it's going to be at its widest toward near the planet but around the opposite side it may be narrow so it's not quite a fully cleared gap and in this particular case you may have a vortex which is inside the orbit of the planet or it's on the inner side of the gap and it's narrower there which means that the vortex can move into the co-orbital region with the planet and co-orbital region just means that it's at the same distance from the star as the planet it's in the same orbit essentially going around in the disk because the dip the gap is narrower so the vortex can exist there now what it does is it can scatter material from the disk into the outer part of the disk so it sends it out this exerts a net negative torque as it crosses the planet's orbit now what that actually does is it causes the planet to have a rapid inward migration because you've removed material from the inner part of the disk and then the planet then moves inwards to essentially compensate for that so it causes a quite sudden jump in its migration speed inwards and it's no longer smooth while the vortex is not doing that it will be smooth but then if it does you get a sudden rapid burst of inward migration then it will go back to a more smooth like migration until maybe it happens again or the planet gets big enough that actually it creates a full gap instead so thank you for watching and if you enjoy then do check out some of the other videos